thank you, Dr. Corbin, for such a very comprehensive presentation. Uh, we move on to the second presentation by Dr. Bong Ju Li. Uh, he is a professor of social welfare at Seoul National University. His research areas are child welfare, child maltreatment, and child well-being. Professor Bong Ju Li is also the co editor together with Professor Ashi Benarie of the journal Child Educators Research. Well, uh, thank you uh, for your very kind uh, introduction. And I also must uh, tell you that uh, I'm very happy to be here, uh, particularly that uh, at least I can tell you one thing. Uh, my presence here makes this conference truly multicultural. So I'm really glad to be here. Uh, uh, what I'm going to do uh, in the given time that I have, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the macro social economic changes uh, that are going on uh, in Korea, and uh, talk a little bit about uh, Korea's situation with child maltreatment, uh, and also talk a little bit about child protection system in Korea, and my own thoughts on uh, some of the ways that Korean system needs to develop further. <clears throat> Uh, entering the 21st century, uh, Korea is facing rapid changes in economic and social development. Uh, we are going very rapidly, what I call a, a post-industrialization, uh, probably like uh, Israel. Uh, uh, so we are moving from manufacturing to information-based economy. And in this transition, we are also facing a emerging new social risks. And these changes provide added burden on social services and require new directions uh, for social protection. So uh, as I told you, uh, I'm going to go over uh, some of the recent economic and social changes and also examine a uh, pattern of child maltreatment in Korea, uh, talk a little bit about the current child protection systems, and uh, sort of think about what could be the implications of these new social risks for uh, child protection systems and some of the challenges uh, they provide, and also uh, <clears throat> provide uh, some of the directions for improving child uh, protect, protection systems in Korea. Uh, I don't know if you know, uh, Korea is uh, the country that has gone through the most rapid economic change in last 50 years. Uh, even in the uh, last 20 years, it's per capita GNI gross national income increased more than three times from uh, around $6,000 to over $25,000 uh, $25, uh, recently. Uh, only in 20 years, uh, it has tripled, more than tripled. However, if you can see in the chart, uh, well, <clears throat> let's see. So this is the line for GNI growth. However, uh, this line represents the, the rate of economic growth. Now, this dip, big dip uh, in the late 90s uh, was at the time uh, there was a, a economic crisis, Asian crisis. Uh, but as you can see, after the economic crisis, Asian economic crisis, while we recovered, the, the, the average growth rate has gone down quite a bit uh, compared to uh, uh, prior to the economic crisis. So before uh, year 2000, uh, average economic growth was around 8 to 9 percent per year. Now it's around 3 to 4 percent. So uh, the, the growth rate uh, uh, is slowing down. So with that, the, the, the economic sort of environment change, uh, one of the things that has happened <clears throat> in recent years is uh, increasing urbanization. So Korea is now a, a very urbanized country. The urbanization rate has reached around 85%. Uh, there have been some major changes going on uh, in family environment. Uh, uh, in some, families have uh, become more fragile, meaning that uh, there has been increase in divorce rates. Uh, in uh, last 20 years, and also uh, uh, with the trend in divorce, increasing divorce rate, uh, there has been increase in single-parent families. Now, compared to U.S., this percent 
might be still very low, but uh, it has gone from 8.7% in 1990 uh, to a, a recent data of around 13%. So for Korea's uh, uh, situation, this is a, a very rapid change uh, 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 surrounding families. Uh, the population structure is also changing very fast. Our birth rate has been decreasing. Uh, as a matter of fact, Korea now has the lowest birth rate among the OECD countries. As you can see in the chart, uh, it has gone down about half the level. And with the birth, uh, decreasing birth rate, uh, the population is uh, aging very fast. So uh, we are entering uh, the very aged uh, society. Uh, with those changes, uh, one of the major trends is increasing economic hardship and inequality. Uh, poverty is increasing in recent years. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, even in 10-year period, uh, now it has stabilized a little bit. But in the first half of uh, 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 the uh, uh, year 2000s, uh, we had a very rapid uh, increase in poverty rate. And this is related to the change that we have gone through going from the more of the industrial sort of economic basis to information uh, economy basis. And with uh, increasing poverty trend, uh, uh, we also have a increasing inequality, as you can see uh, in the increase in Gini coefficient during the same, same time period. Now, with that sort of macro change that is happening very fast, uh, now I'm going to talk about a little bit about the child multi-remun instance study uh, that we did in uh, year 2011. Uh, this was the first population level child multi treatment instance study in Korea. Uh, the, the survey uh, was a household survey with about 5,000 households. Uh, uh, it's a uh, nationally represented sample. Uh, we interviewed uh, a focal child uh, from ages 8 to, eight, 8 to 18 and a primary caretaker in each household. So obviously, those children uh, who are Younger than eight, uh, we couldn't do the survey, so we had to rely on parents' report. But from eight to 18, we also had the parents' report and also the child report. Uh, in the survey, <clears throat> we used uh, Strauss's uh, uh, parent-child conflict tactics scale. Uh, however, in this scale, we only uh, considered uh, in the, what in the original scale uh, labeled as a severe category as a emotional abuse, physical abuse, and neglect uh, uh, to measure the, the situation of the child multi-remun in Korea. And with that data, uh, we had actually data on sort of lifetime instance, uh, but what I'm going to show you now is an annual uh, uh, instance rate. So in the past year, you know, have you had this, uh, this kind of experiences? So uh, this is uh, <clears throat> the result. And this is the, the result uh, that uh, we sort of saw for the first time in Korea because there, were, there had not been any kind of national uh, level study uh, uh, looking at this issue. And uh, in this study, uh, what we found was using those measures, uh, the child abuse and neglect rate is estimated to be around 25%. Uh, and this 25% is uh, experiencing any of physical abuse, uh, emotional abuse, or neglect uh, uh, for children uh, aged zero to eight. And uh, if you see this table, <clears throat> what you can see is uh, the neglect rate uh, was uh, uh, highest, higher uh, than to the physical abuse or uh, uh, emotional abuse, and the physical abuse uh, uh, was uh, the lowest at 7.1%. Uh, and uh, experiencing any of those uh, uh, was at about 25%. Now, since uh, we had uh, both the children's report and the parents' report, uh, we were able to compare uh, uh, the, the, what they are saying. And what we found was the agreement rate, uh, 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 regardless of the age group that uh, we consider, are uh, around at 75%, are uh, very consistent. Uh, so when, when we were beginning this uh, survey, uh, we were a little bit worried uh, that the parents might actually under-report uh, uh, some of the instances, but uh, it turns out the agreement rate is uh, uh, quite uh, uh, reasonable uh, at 75%. <clears throat> uh, 
looking at some of the risk factors for child maltreatment from the data, uh, uh, as you can see here, the, the, the metropolitan area has the highest rate, uh, and the, the rural area has the lowest rate. Uh, comparing by income groups, uh, the low income group uh, had the highest rate. Uh, however, what's interesting is this is sort of the middle income. Uh, middle income has the lowest, and as you go to more of the upper income, actually it has tend to uh, uh, go up a little bit. So we are curious about that, and we are doing some uh, further studies of what sort of makes uh, uh, this sort of sort of the, the uh, 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 difference uh, between the the middle income and high income group. Uh, in terms of family structure, what we found was a single parent family is also a risk factor. Uh, as you can see, has the highest uh, rate uh, around at 32%. With all that, uh, this uh, table, I don't know if you can see the numbers. Uh, this is a, uh, a simple multivariate logistic regression trying to uh, examine the factors affecting child multiple risks. And what I hear, <clears throat> what I have here is age, gender, uh, family structure. Uh, this is primary caretakers' education level. Uh, primary caretaker is actually uh, mostly uh, mothers uh, who who responded to survey. Uh, this is area, and this is family income. Oh, this is cut down a little bit, but uh, so if you see this. Uh, one of the things that comes out is even after controlling for all the factors, the metro area, the large cities, are definitely a risk factor living in large cities. And also the family income. This is a below uh, 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 poverty line, and that's a positive, and that means that the, the poor families uh, tend to have a, a, a higher rates of child maltreatment, uh, even controlling for other factors. What's interesting, though, is if you see this, uh, before you control for poverty, you see a very significant effect of single parent families. So, uh, but after you control for poverty, that effect disappears. So what it suggests is that the, sort of the, the, the higher rates of uh, child abuse neglect in single parent families is in fact due to the poverty situation uh, many of these families face, not necessarily the family structure itself. So uh, I thought that uh, was also an uh, interesting uh, finding in our study. So what does this uh, National Instances, Instances Study say? Uh, there are a large number of children uh, at about 25%. Uh, from 0 to 18, uh, we have uh, 10 million children. Uh, total population size is about 50 million in Korea. So from 0 to 18, it's about 10 million. So 25% is a lot of children we are talking about uh, in Korea. Uh, the analysis show that children uh, living in large metropolitan areas, uh, living in single parent families, and low income families face a greater risk of child maltreatment. Now, now I'm going to move on to the child protection system in Korea. Uh, we legislated a mandatory reporting law a uh, year in 2000. Uh, so the law specified the abuse and neglect as a condition of requiring child protection through government intervention for the first time in Korea. And before the legislation, obviously, there was no law mandating the reporting of suspect child abuse and neglect. And the law uh, instituted a definitions of child abuse and neglect uh, it also instituted a mandate reporting system, including 24-hour hotline, and created, created a regional uh, child protection agencies. And now we have about 50 of them across the country uh, doing the child protective uh, services. Uh, we have a database that keeps track of uh, reports, uh, and this shows some of the reported tr uh, case trend. And as you can see, uh, there has been rapid increase uh, from about 2,000 cases. Uh, this is reported and substantiated uh, in year 2001 to around 6,700 cases in 2013. Now, one of the question is, is this really, does this reflect changes in child multiple rates 
or is it simply changes in reporting behavior? And my own sort of sense is it's the latter uh, than the former, obviously. Uh, however, what this number suggests is that the number of reported cases represents a very small fraction of children who are identified as uh, a, a being in uh, risk of child maltreatment by the National Incident Study. So uh, this number represents about 0.3% of those the study identified as uh, children who are at the risk of child maltreatment. So what are some of the challenges for child protection systems in Korea? Uh, <clears throat> as I uh, indicated, uh, some of these increasing new social risks uh, place added burdens on child protection system. And even with the creation of child pro protection system in year 2000, a general public's a, a lack of awareness of abuse and neglect is still a barrier for protecting children. Uh, there is still a very low level of reporting. Uh, and actually in the law, we have a mandated reporters, like you know, school teachers, doctors, nurses, uh, but the, even the reporting rate or, or, or for the mandated reporters is still very low. So that uh, has been a major barrier. Uh, and also there is a very a strong, in Korean culture, there is a very strong, good, I can do that in five minutes, I think. There's a very strong a cultural tradition of a treating parenting style as a family matter. So it's not a social matter. You know, each family does their own thing. Uh, and also there is this sort of a cultural tradition of emphasizing saving face so that you don't want to disclose what you think uh, uh, are the bad things about your family. So, uh, uh, you know, people try to keep family matters within the family, and that means that if you, you know, that means uh, it's very difficult to report something when you see something because that means that you are interfering the family matters. Uh, another sort of characteristics of the child prote protection system in Korea is uh, uh, there is no uh, uh, close link with the court system. Uh, so C CPS intervention is being delivered as a more of a administrative intervention without the court involvement in most cases. And, and uh, culturally, there is a very strong emphasis on parental rights. So even uh, with the severe abuse and neglect cases, it has been very difficult to uh, 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 place uh, limitation on the parents' rights. So when the parents cl claim that they want to have their children back, the system just has to give it back to them. So that has been one of the problems. Uh, there's a lack of early intervention systems. Uh, and another characteristic is that the system is built on privatization. So all those 50 agencies are privatized uh, 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 agencies uh, employing uh, NGO employees. And so that is sort of a problem of uh, not having a public accountability uh, of services. And uh, I hear this everywhere I go. Uh, Korea is no exception. Uh, there is a lack of coordination between CPS and other agencies, including police and court and medical uh, institutions. So what are the, some of the things that I think uh, need to happen to improve child protection systems in Korea? Uh, first of all, uh, public campaign and education will be very important to increase the general population's awareness of child abuse and neglect. Uh, I think we really need to think about creating the court uh, specialized in child protection. Uh, also, uh, strengthening parental right termination process when it is needed. Uh, and also, uh, development of early intervention systems such as home visiting programs or other uh, evidence-based programs. Uh, Reorganizing CPS work is an option because I, uh, I was, as I was telling you, it's now all privatized, but we might have a two-track system uh, where the investigation is done by government agency, but the services are provided by uh, private agencies. Uh, strengthening that to community services is another challenge. And with that, my presentation is over. Thank you. Yeah.